what's your reaction? World Cup coming to United Group here, United States, Mexico, and Canada. It's awesome. I, I was here, obviously, when I played for the Strikers, when Joe Robbie was here with Ray Hudson in, in the late 70s, early 80s, and we saw the emergence of football in this country. The 94 World Cup was instrumental for MLS. I talk about MLS. David Beckham is, uh, is having a team here as well. To get the World Cup again and have eight years to prepare for youth soccer to continue to grow, for kids out there right now dreaming of playing in the World Cup in Canada, the United States, and Mexico, the socioeconomic impact of those three countries, it's just awesome. And, and, and that's what Football is all about. We embrace each other. It's the world's game. It's coming to the global stage here in the United States, 60 plus games, a different format, obviously, more teams this time, uh, which allows us to see the, the smaller teams in the world, maybe, to play the bigger teams. And that's what football is all about. 94, it was in Orlando, now could be coming to a Hard Rock Stadium. What would that mean to have? some games here, maybe, you know, some quarterfinals, some semifinals at Hard Rock Stadium. It would be awesome. Miami is, is the gateway to the South. And let's face it, Argentina, Brazil, Mexico uh, are some of the big names that will be here. And what better place for those teams to play in South Florida, in Miami, in one of the most modern stadiums in the world uh, with great capacities. They've hosted teams there before. Stephen Ross uh, and his group has done a great job with the, with the Dolphins. Well, <laughs> they haven't done too well in terms of results, but the stadium itself, we've been there for soccer games. It's made for soccer. Let's be real honest, uh, with an intent. Maybe Stephen Ross knew more than we did, but uh, to have a game here, to have an important game here, to have a final here, which is possible, um, without a doubt, would help not just the growth of soccer in South Florida, but would cement us with David Beckham's uh, franchise as one of the hotbeds in this country where teams throughout the world want to come to and, and, and play either preseason games or big games like in a World Cup final. How do you see this community? Obviously, you're with the Strikers. Talk about the growth of soccer in South Florida and now until 2026. Yeah, it's been an interesting ride. You know, let's be real honest. You, you were in the late 70s. It was the Dolphins and the Strikers. We, we, we own South Florida, you know, <laughs> which was great. A lot of competition now with other sports. Um, the beaches are still an attraction, obviously, which makes it hard. We've had some teams fail. Uh, we've had some teams that were very successful. And I think that David Beckham is smart enough to cater towards a certain crowd, to look at demographics, bring in the light, light players. David, bring in a Brazilian. Bring in a Brazilian. Bring in a Mexican as well. And a good European player. You've got deep pockets. That would really cater towards this community that is so vast and growing with so many different cultural influences that would make South Florida, again, one of the important places to be, like it was in the old days for the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. What does this do for a team like Beckham's group to get that team going? Like Ray said, gives a little kick in the, uh, you know, it gets it moving, some momentum. How can they... How can they capitalize on this? Well, I think it's important right now that, that, that Beckham realizes that in eight years there will be a huge event and that David Beckham can piggy ride on that till a certain extent and, and, and put himself in a position uh, to be a major player in South Florida and be a maybe a spokesperson for Stephen Ross to see if we can get some big games here. Beckham is, is, is respected throughout the soccer community internationally, Nationally, he's played in the United States, great name, obviously, and I think the synergy between the World Cup, David Beckham, uh, the stadium, the Hard Rock, it all makes sense to me, believe me. And I'm Dutch, I'm from Amsterdam, so not a lot of things make sense, but this makes, this makes sense, baby, for South Florida. Switching gears to this year's World Cup, what's your prediction and why, and talk about this year's field. <sighs> Just like I did with Real Madrid in the Champions League, all right, you first have to beat the, the big boys. And Germany is the current holder. Uh, historically, the current holders haven't done well, like Italy and Spain. Nobody's ever won back-to-back -back World Cups, which would be very interesting. But Germany, to me, is deep quality-wise, has the right mentality always in tournaments, uh, in terms of grinding out results, and makes them a hard team to play. Now, Brazil is there with Neymar, best Brazil team that we've seen in a long time. The Tite is, is the coach. Messi like the LeBron James right now, carrying a team, Argentina, that's not supposed to be very good, maybe to the promised land. Is he going to win finally at World Cup? And finally people are going to say, forget about Maradona. <laughs> Messi is the man. And then Ronaldo at Portugal won the Euros. You never know. He's hot right now, 17 goals in the Champions League. It should be very interesting, but Germany is still the team to beat. 
Another prediction. World Cup 2026 is first before Beckham's team or vice versa? No, Beckham will, will be up and running uh, within the next two years. That's what we've been told. Stadium is the first priority to build and start building that. Um, without a doubt, David Beckham will be up and running five or six years before the World Cup comes here, which is important too, because you're gonna talk about season ticket uh, sales, uh, get a groundswell going, now you got another thing you can hang your head on, which is the World Cup's gonna be here, so support your local team. Awesome, I will, I hope most of you do as well.